Good evening all. I'm going to talk a little bit about windsurfing. I'm just having a bit of Shiraz here. Pepper Jack Shiraz. You will thank me later. Because any inclination to have some sort of rant over frustrations will be greatly diminished. Anyway, um, as I said in the last video, yeah, a few little frustrations with carding at the moment. And in some ways, I see some of the, the what I see as mistakes that carding is going through, very similar to what I've seen board sailing go through um, maybe 20 years ago. That is this focus on the elite side of it. Um, but we won't focus too much on that in this video. Suffice it to say, while I'm having these frustrations about, uh, you know, sending my engine into state to get... Uh, resealed when there's nothing wrong with it and when I'm having these frustrations about maybe our class not getting accepted in all the different meets and um, the increasing cost which never gets any lower I'm watching out at the side at this other sport this other sport that I used to do a lot as a kid in the 80s and that's windsurfing and how that came about was I had the good fortune to spend eight years living in Saudi Arabia in a town called Jeddah, which is on the coast of the Red Sea. So for anyone who knows anything about um, diving or snorkeling, the Red Sea Reef is is one of the places to go. And literally, you can just walk out and bang, reef. It's there. It's pristine. And, you know, it's warm. It's a great place to do sailing. And as it turns out, it's a great place to do windsurfing. So our school had this amazing curriculum that increased sorry included it was like an aquatics program uh, we called it an outdoor pursuits program and this gentleman got brought on in 1984 to run it and his speciality was windsurfing so my father worked with him a bit as a swimming coach at the school and they did a lot of stuff together and he got involved in the sailing aspect he enjoyed the windsurfing and naturally the whole family started doing the same thing on weekends it was our go-to activity and I loved it I loved it took me a little bit of a while to get it together to pick it up I have these memories of being literally tied to a jetty so I couldn't disappear so far away and I'd pick the sail up and I'd fall in or I'd try to pick it up again I'd fall in and this went on for you know maybe 12 months until I started getting it together and I'd go oh, I can untie you now and I'd sail between this jetty and that jetty in waist deep water and finally you know I'm getting it as a I don't know what I was at the time and seven or eight year old kid I was pretty young um, and our school had this program so you could join the club and you could get better and on weekends we went and did our you know our family sailing a local sailing club as well for board sailors and this went on for a, a few years and it was great fun in fact I think one of the videos here this is like a school um, well it's it's a it's actually a competition sponsored by BIC it's a manufacturer uh, and this was the juniors race which I was in. I think I came third overall in that, that regatta. And yeah, I mean, that was one of the great things. You had some really great sponsors supporting it. And uh, when I came to Australia, I thought, probably going to be continuing with this, hopefully. But that just didn't happen. We lived too far away. So one thing led to another, move on to other things in life. And then years later, I thought, hmm, why don't we just get out on the water and go windsurfing again? And um, so I went out, got aboard and went sailing and I thought right I'm enjoying this the next logical thing was to go racing again let's go find a club and that was about in 2000 and that's what I found there wasn't much by way of course racing and it got down to the direction the sport had taken which was more elitist so it got too expensive it was focused more on shall we say looking at what the pros were doing than what the average family was doing and it, it just didn't make it acceptable sorry accessible so, you know, who can afford to just replace all their kit every year just to stay competitive? So that kind of fell by the wayside. And, um, yeah, I moved on to other things. 2009, I get diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis. And um, that could really cause some mobility issues if it's not under control. And I just, I didn't sail. I didn't sail for 16 years. I went out, did other things. Um found I did quite well in cold water. It was good for, you know, inflammation. 
so I got involved in cave diving and free diving and back into open water swimming and things like that. And eventually we got back into go-karting, which can be quite brutal physically, and found physically that was okay. And so I thought, well, it'd be nice to know if I can sail still. But what really motivated me is I'm looking at what is going on in the sailing world and there's this budget class, this one design class, Windsurfer LT that's come about. I thought, hey, this thing's cooking again. I can go down to the local sailing club and take part in this, except I can't because I haven't sailed for 16 years. So for a while, I just let this go on. I just thought we're going go-karting. And when the frustrations happen and when I'm thinking, do I jump into a um, 125 class, I noticed that the cost was similar between getting just the motor, the second-hand motor, or going into the class. So I chose the latter. Um, <clears throat> motivated by a few frustrations, I have to say. And and here we are. We went out, found we could still sail, got the board, uh, joined a club, and now we're just trying to get our, our, our shit together, basically, to be competitive and start in about a month for the competitive season. I'm trying to work out what is a bigger pain to do. Go-kart sticker kits or applying race numbers to sales. And it probably doesn't help that I'm on a carpet here, but given it's raining outside and given we need the floor space, I guess this is the best option. But um, yeah, there's all these, it's, it's no different to carding. There's all these regulations about size and where you put them. So starboard side is up, which you can, can't probably quite see it through there. Uh, and they're meant to be, I think, four and a half centimeters apart. Um, so yeah, here we have it. And as far as the actual numbers you run, um, I think it's a little bit more relaxed at a local level, but if you want to be sure that you're not going to have to change whenever you go into state, it pays to be on this larger national register. Um, so I've gone to some trouble to get a number that I don't think anyone else is going to have. And you can't use single or double digits. They're reserved for people who are, uh, I think for the most part, represent the country. Um, so, yeah, what we've got is, well, we run the 75 in carding essentially because it's my birth year. So I thought, why not run the whole damn number? So that's what we're doing. And there you go. Not such a terrible job. Um, so whilst we will we'll still carp from time to time, we're going to focus in the next... 12 months probably on windsurfing to see what we can do. And I can't wait. And while I'm doing this, this gentleman I'm in contact with, he's like the state rep for the class. He said, why don't you come on my podcast, my YouTube channel and do an interview and as, as a person like returning to sailing. So here's just a little bit of that interview. I'll put the link in the description box um, if you're interested. Uh, so here it is. What made you consider the LT as a way of getting back into sailing? Well, I, I kind of be monitoring in the background the development of this board because, um, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about this significantly in, over, over the coming weeks, coming months. But uh, I did try with some others to get some interest in one design racing probably about uh, 20 years ago. Uh, and one of the issues was that the boards that were available were either too expensive, uh, they weren't supported by manufacturers, like they didn't keep making the same one for long enough, um, or, you know, there was the old Windsurfer 1 design, but the Windsurfer 1 design, I found, did not handle particularly well in the swell, at least not unless you're a really, really good sailor and could sail around its issues. So I thought, wouldn't it be good if we had um, boards a little bit like the boards I sailed on in my youth in the, in the 80s? Um, which were like the Mistral competition, competition super light, Bermuda, all those kind of boards, traditional long boards from the same mold. And they weren't available, but I thought, well, if one comes about, I'd, I'd love to do this again. So I monitored it, started watching videos of people selling LTs and go, this is, um, this is great. It's going great guns again. So yeah, that's kind of uh, what I, I'm watching YouTube, you know, and uh, listening to what other people like yourselves were saying. And I thought, I think I want to try this again. Oh, brilliant. Oh, I'm glad that, that we could be there to help promote the the sport and the board. So that sounds like it's a, a really positive thing. 
As I said, that's just a small part of the interview. If you're interested in watching it in full, I will put the link in the description box. And yeah, I mean, you might enjoy some of uh, Simon's content because I think he'll be doing more and more on the Windsor LT class. Uh, whereas my channel's more of a vlog following all kinds of things, whatever direction life takes me in. But if you like the sound of windsurfing, uh, yeah, be interested to hear from you. I'm happy to tell you more about it. If you like going outside, fresh air, uh, meeting new people, very social, or competing in a really exciting sport that keeps you quite fit, I can't really recommend it enough. It's been you know, a really big part of my life, particularly when I was growing up, and I'm really excited to uh, get back involved.